and welcome to Abiding Faith Christian Center Sunday morning broadcast. We thank you, Facebook family and friends, for joining us this morning. Our mission is establishing, empowering, and maturing lives to fulfill God's divine purpose. Because we all know without purpose, a person has nothing to guide them into their divine destiny. Our mission vision statement is through the teaching and preaching of the word, we will reach the lost, bring restoration to backsliders, give hope to the hopeless, minister healing to those that are afflicted. We will bring believers to spiritual maturity, enabling them to impact this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Abiding Faith Christian Center is located at Great Lake Business Center. That's 1428 West Court Street, across from Powers High School, Flint, Michigan, 48503. You can also join us for Saturday noon prayer and Sunday Bible school at 10 a.m., followed by our worship service at 11. We also have Thursday Bible school at 6 p.m., where everyone is welcome. So j help us bring up Pastor Hamer with the word. Praise the Lord. Well, 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 studying the lesson for the last month or so on having faith now is faith for tomorrow. Having faith now is faith for tomorrow. We looked at the book of Hebrews, the third chapter, where Paul gave uh, out of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> the historical writing about the children of Israel when they left out of Egypt and they went uh, went uh, through the desert and got to the Red Sea and how they were there and then how uh, the Red Sea was 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 uh, divided by Moses stretching his hands and rod over the uh, Red Sea and the waters were divided by the power of God and we understood from the scriptures that unless Moses had did something it would never have happened. Isn't that true? Amen. We found that it would have never happened. We also found out that all the things that happened to them when they went through the desert, when they were going into the promised land, whether they were walking through the, to the wilderness for 40, 40, 40 years uh, because of unbelief. And uh, we realized that all those things that happened to them, the different various uh, um, situations and events, was because it happened for them, the Bible says, for examples, and they are written for our admonition. Now, it happened as an example uh, because God didn't intend for them to miss it. God didn't intend for them to wander through the desert for 40 years. He wanted them to go right straight across through the promised land, but because of their unbelief, because they listened to the words of unbelievers, amen? Those who came back with an evil report, well, it caused them to hear and they heard what they heard and they believed what they heard and they, they, turned, they turned from the promises of God because God said he had given them the land. Amen? Amen? And so they did not cross over into the unpromised land, those who came out of Egypt because of unbelief. But the sons, the daughters that were born after them, they ended up going across into the promised land along with Caleb and Joshua because they had another spirit. They wholly followed the Lord. So we found that out in the scriptures and so as we were studying uh, we came to something that I shared by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and I'm going to share with you today and that is today we know that the body of Christ is, in worldwide is in the midst of a great test and trial which presently affects various aspects of our lives individually and collectively we understand that we know that and, uh, and I, I mentioned to you how the Holy Spirit inspired me to go back and to teach this particular le lesson about having faith now is faith for tomorrow. Amen. And so I did it as, an, as the Holy Spirit inspired me uh, to bring and stir up your pure hearts to remembrance and also to inform you that how we individually and collectively as members of the body of Christ respond to the present situations in this world will determine our outcome for the future. How we respond in the beginning of the year 2021 will determine our outcome for the future for the rest of 2021. Are you listening? Have you gone home yet? Okay, you're still here. Good. Now, listen, we found out that it is up to us and not up to God how things turn out, as some people believe. We found that it will be according to our faith. As Moses at the edge of the Red Sea, 
when he first turned around because the children of Israel had saw that Moses, uh, uh, Pharaoh was coming with all his chariots and all the men and they were behind them and they were blocked from going across because the Red Sea was full of water and they looked and they began to cry to Moses and begin to complain and murmur about Moses having brought them out here so that they can be destroyed by Pharaoh. And Moses turned around and said, fear not, stand ye still. He said, because you're going to see the salvation of the Lord. He said, well, the Lord's going to work it out. Oh, yeah, God is in control, you, you Israelites. Don't worry about a thing. Just stand back and look at them, look at them, uh, uh, them, them uh, 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 chariots of Pharaoh and himself and his military, and you're going to see God's going to do something. He's going to do something. And next thing we knew that God spoke up. He spoke to Moses and says, wherefore you cries out unto me? He said, stretch your arm out over the Red Sea and your rod. And he said, divide the Red Sea. He told Moses to do something. And it seemed like it was an impossible situation. You mean Moses was going to divide the Red Sea? Well, the Bible says that's what happened. He said, God told him to stretch forth his rod. God says, I want you to exercise your faith so that my power can work in your behalf. And when Moses did it, the Red Sea was divided and there was dry land. And the children of Israel went across. And when Moses got under the side, other side, he withdrew his arm over the Red Sea. And the waters came back together because Pharaoh decided, I'm going to run across the same, same Red Sea on dry line to kill the people of God. He thought, now they were, they were motivated, motivated by Satan. You know, Satan, he'll, man, he'll make it look like you're going to be defeated at the last moment because he's going to still keep on doing what he's doing because he has, he's, 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 he's blinded. He doesn't see truth. And you know what happened? Pharaoh's uh, the chariots got over there and the water came back and they just flooded the whole army. Every one of them were killed. In fact, they have, they have those archaeologists and they found some of these chariots, the wheels, still down up under the Red Sea, up under there. They found it up under the water. Discovered it. All it did is just confirm what was true anyway. Can you say amen? It didn't make the Bible true because they discovered it. The Bible was true anyway. Amen? And that's, about, that's the same about anything. So we, we, we saw this and we said that unless we do something, as the children of Israel were responsible to hear and believe and act upon the word of God, so we as the body of Christ today are required to do the same thing. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse number two, we read it in the scriptures. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. As we said before, if Moses had never stretched his hand out to, over the Red Sea, the water would never have been divided. Somebody said, well, I thought it was God that divided the Red Sea. Well, I know you heard that, and I heard that, and I believe that just like you. But when I read the Bible, but when I read the Bible, I said when I read the Bible and the Holy Spirit opened up my eyes in the Bible, I found out that God told Moses to stretch his hands out over the water and divide the Red Sea. And when Moses had this done, then the Red Sea was divided. Do you remember the story when Jesus was on the seashore and he was preaching to the people? And then finally he got into the boat of Simon Peter, and, uh, Simon Peter, and then he said, launch out a little bit so I can preach to these people. That was Jesus' platform, so he can preach to the people. And Peter launched out a little bit, and Jesus stood up and probably sat down in the boat, and he began to preach his sermon to the people. He began to teach the people the word of God. And after he got to him preaching to the people and stuff, and he finished his service, his message, he says, well, uh, praise God, I'm going to bring this message to a close, praise God. And so he brought it to a close. And finally he turned around to Simon Peter and said, launch out to the deep and let down your net for a drought. And Simon Peter, who was a professional fisherman, they made their living by that. And back to Simon Peter and his father had a business and had hired people, other men that had boats. And they had boats probably owned by Peter and his father that they were using so they can bring all this fish in. So they had a fishing company. And so Simon Peter turned around to Jesus and says, Master, he said, we have toiled all the night. All the what? All the night. We have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Because Peter mentioned about toiling all night because during that time, the fishing nets weren't like the kind that we have, they have today. The fishing nets they have today, are, they're kind of modern. I think they're made out of certain material and stuff that the fish really can't see it sometimes. They swim right into the net. Or however they do it, with those, those boats with the engines under and everything else. They drag that net through there. So anyway, the bottom line is that he said to Jesus, Peter calculating, evaluating with his mind, because your mind is created to evaluate, to calculate, to come up with decisions. Mm -hmm. God designed the human mind to do that. Mm -hmm. And so Peter, after his evaluating, calculating with his human mind, based upon the natural circumstances that he was facing at the time, 
He said, we had taught all the night and taken nothing. Then he turned around and he said, nevertheless, who glory be to God. You know, when you get to the nevertheless, that's when you're ready for your miracle. Amen. You got to get to the nevertheless. The nevertheless is nevertheless what the natural circumstances are looking at, looking like in my life. I'm going to do what God's word says to do. I'm going to step out on the water. I'm going to act. I'm going to stretch my hand over the Red Sea. you got to get to the place of nevertheless. I don't care what my body feels like. I don't care what my body looks like. I don't care what my bank account looks like. I don't care what society and the circumstance, the economy and the government looks like. I'm not worried about that. I'm not going to let that dictate to me where I am with God and what God is going to do in my life. Nevertheless, Peter said. I'll let I'll do what you said. I'll let down the net. And the Bible says when he had this done, it says when he this had done. When is a time frame. And you're going to have to get to the place that you're going to have to either. You're going to have to make a decision to act on the word of God. You're going to have to do something. Talking about it, dancing about it, shouting about it, Man. swinging over the chandeliers about it on Sunday morning because you hear the message is a whole different story when you give Sunday morning and go home and on um, Sunday morning and you go home and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday comes around right. and nobody else is not around there. You don't have that charged atmosphere with all the other brothers and sisters shouting and stuff and the, and, 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 and the voice of the preachers preaching and everything. And you're getting all emotionally excited and then you get home and stuff and you're not hearing that anymore. Mm -hmm. That excitement, hey, 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 you're going to need more than just excitement. You're going to need some faith and you're going to need to act upon the faith that you have in your heart that, that comes as a result of the word of God. That's if you've been hearing some words. Unfortunately, some people hear a whole bunch of emotionalism, a whole bunch of shouting, a whole bunch of sermonettes and homiletics and stuff, and they're not really hearing no verse, word, word. They're not hearing no word. They're hearing the wisdom of man's words, but they're not hearing the word. So they don't have no faith to, to act upon when they get back home on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So the circumstances overcome them instead of them being overcomers. But God wants us to be overcomers. Can you say amen? amen. Having faith now is having is faith for tomorrow because tomorrow is going to come. It's guaranteed tomorrow is going to come. Time don't wait for nobody. Amen. Amen? That we live in, praise God. This confined of time that we live in as human beings upon the earth. Now, so what happened? Peter says, nevertheless, at thy word, I will. And when they had this done. And when they had this done. That's what the scripture says in the Bible. They let down the let, net. And next thing you know, a whole drought of fishes just swam, just swam into the net in the daytime. When the best time to fish as a seasonal professional fisherman, because that's what they were, was at night. But in the daytime, that didn't make any sense. You're absolutely right. It wasn't sense. What was it? It was faith. Faith is hearing, believing, and acting on the word of God. Amen. That's what faith is. Faith is not talking about the word, shouting about the word, dancing about the word. Coding the word. No, faith is acting on the word of God. You said you believe you healed? Yes, I believe I'm healed. Then you need to act like it. Amen. Do, attempt to do what you can't, couldn't do before. Amen. When the pain hits your body, don't talk about the pain. Oh, I'm in just so much pain. Oh, this hurts so bad. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You said, what did I do, Pastor? Do what the Bible says. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. What do you mean? You don't walk, look at the things that are seen. The Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by the word and not by the senses. You ignore it. You don't deny it. It's there. The pain is there. But you just don't acknowledge it. You say, oh, I thank you, Father, because I believe I'm healed. You followed up with that. Are you listening? Yeah, you're followed up with a confession. Oh, I thank you, Father, that I'm healed. Now, the oh at the beginning is the pain. That pain calls you to say, oh. But you didn't turn around and talk about, oh, I'm so much pain. Oh, Lord, I thought you healed me. No, 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 no. No, no, no. See, now what you're doing, you're walking by sight. You're walking by feeling. Are you listening? Yeah. I'll go to the bank book and look at the bank book and see what you, see what you have in the bank. Or you go online and log into your account. You look at your account and see what you got in your account. Every time you turn around, every time, every time you look at that bill that's laying on the counter right there, then you go in there and you look at your account. No, don't look at that. 
Turn over and look at the Bible and read the Bible. It says, but my God shall supply all my needs, all your needs, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen? That's what you do. You said, nevertheless, at that word, when you get to a place where you have some seed to sow and you're in the service and you know that, listen, you know that you have some needs at home. You don't hold on to that. Well, I'm going to hold on to that and stuff. And, and, and I think I'm going to try to, I'm going to pay off a little bit on this bill. They ain't going to pay the bill off. When you pay, when you pay, the, when you pay partial on the bill, it's that to them, it's still like you're not paying your bill. That's seed to sow. Sow the seed. Nevertheless, at thy word, I'm going to give. And I'm going to expect God to cause it to be given back to me. Amen. And sometimes you have to do that. What are you doing? You said, nevertheless, at that word, I will. You're stretching out your hand over the sea. Mm -hmm. And you're dividing the Red Sea of, of opposition, difficulty, circumstances, tests and trials. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says. You are going to have to do something in 2021. Somebody said, if you do the same thing. In 2021 that you did in 2020 and expect different results that is akin to being insane mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not insane are you no 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 you got to change what you do you got to change how you act and how you think but you can't make that change without knowledge knowledge of what knowledge of the truth knowledge of the Word of God you have to get the Word of God in you because when you get the Word of God in you get faith in you and faith comes by hearing, hearing. and hearing by the the Bible said faith comes by hearing. It didn't say faith comes by having heard. It said faith comes by hearing. Which implies that you're going to have to hear the word of God over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. You just can't hear the word of God one time. You got to hear the word of God on a constant basis. Why? Because faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Say faith comes by, faith comes by. hearing. Hearing. Hearing, hearing and 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 hearing I know somebody said pastor when you gonna stop saying that when you get it that's what I'm gonna stop saying it I want you to get it I want you to know that faith comes by hearing on a continuous basis it doesn't come by having heard so that you can renew the thinking in your mind. So that at any given opportunity when the circumstances of life come upon you, the tests and trials come upon you, the first thing you do instinctively is you act upon the word of God that you've been hearing over and over again. But what happens is a lot of times we get out there and we listen to the news broadcaster. We go out there and we read what's on the internet. We go out there and we pick up that iPhone and that Android and all the other phones we have. <laughs> a little personal joke between me and Angie. And we look it up and we get in, we get in the news. Because you get news. They, they send the news to you and alert you when you get bad news on the phone. The devil wants to keep your mind cluttered with negativeness. Right. He wants to keep your mind cluttered with un unbelief and doubt and fear. Right. That's the whole purpose of it. Amen. Now I know there's nothing wrong with being informed. But what happens, dear my God, it's got so... Listen, why don't I just get informed when I want to get informed? Right. I mean, I log in when I want to log in. Maybe this, maybe this day, maybe this whole week, I don't want to get informed. I don't want to hear nothing bad about the word. I want to fill myself up with the word of God. Because the word of God tells you in this world, you're going to have tribulations, tests, and trials. You can rest assured there's going to be some circumstances and verses that's going to come up. Why you got to go get the news for the news to tell you? Even when, when, it, when it comes up, they tell you, what's going, they tell you what's going, what, what God told you was going to happen beforehand. God said beforehand. That all these things were going to come up on the earth. Amen. The love of many was going to wax cold. Mm -hmm. Lovers of pleasures before instead of, of lo uh, lovers of God. Amen. Truth breakers. Yes. Huh? Inordinate affections. Mm -hmm. Huh? All kind of stuff the Bible said was going to happen in the last days. See, what they're showing us is stuff that God talked about already. So why do you want to go and fill your mind up with that stuff? Oh, you know this is happening. Oh, you know that is happening. Oh, the news people said this is going to happen. Oh, I just got this text. It's going to happen. My brother, sister, now you talk about it. You think about that, and it brings fear into your heart. And now you're wondering, oh, this world is so terrible. I just don't know what we're going to do. It's getting worse and worse. And the Bible says where sin does abound, grace that much more abound. The Bible says that. Amen. 
And if they said grace shall abound, that means the power of God is going to abound. That means the help of God is going to abound. That means we can overcome in the circumstances of life. But if you don't fill your mind and your hearing, you're thinking about that, you won't have faith now so that you can have faith for the tomorrow. Because tomorrow is going to come. Didn't the Bible says in the book of Matthew, didn't Jesus say in Matthew the 6th chapter, he said, take no thought about tomorrow. Didn't Jesus say that in the Bible? Or, or, or have, did Pastor miss it? Did I miss it somewhere? Jesus says, take no thought about tomorrow. Take no thought about the future. He said, because today, sufficient for today, is the evil thereof. Mm -hmm. What you got to deal with today. But he said, if you seek first, say seek first. Now, from my understanding, with the education that I received when I grew up in Los Angeles, California, and then you know, when I got out, and then I went to Bible college for a couple of years and stuff full time. I mean, with the education that I got, I, my understanding when it says sufficient, the word sufficient means to, what, what's the, what is needed, what you presently need right now, the help that you need right now, all that you need to help you right now, sufficient for the day, is the evil. Now, in other words, you got enough to deal with today than, than wait until tomorrow. Then worrying about, instead of worrying about tomorrow. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said that. You worrying about the future. No, he says, seek ye first. Excuse me, that's what I'm talking about. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's what I was going to talk about. Now, from my understanding, seek ye first, first things first, it means put that in priority. Make that of most, um, utmost important. That's what I was talking about. I went, to, I went to school. <laughs> that first means first. It means make most of utmost important. He says, seek ye first, Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which simply means his way of doing things. You know, because righteousness, it means doing things the way the Father wants things to be done. And the way that we find out how God wants things to be done is through the scriptures. Because the scriptures reveal to us what God's will is. Isn't that true? Because when Jesus went to John the Baptist, when he left Galilee to go to Jordan, he found John the Baptist and he said, John, I want you to baptize me. Why did Jesus say that to John the Baptist? Because God told him. God told him what his will was for Jesus at that time. And when John the Baptist tried to forbid Jesus, Jesus said, no, it is necessary for us, me and you, John, to fulfill all righteousness. And when he had this done, when he came up out of the water, the voice of God said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. This is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. What was he pleased about? He was pleased by Jesus doing things the way that he wanted things to be done. What was that? Righteousness. It is necessary, John, for us to fulfill all, to fulfill, to fulfill all righteousness, to do things God's way. So we can get God's results. And he got God's results. He got anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good. Can you say amen? amen. Having faith now is faith for tomorrow. We're going to have to do something. Peter received faith when he was on the boat. Jesus spoke to him. He says, launch out into the deep. Let down your nets for a drop. Now another thing Peter did, but Peter got involved with helping God, helping Jesus, didn't he? You know, a lot of times we want to get all the blessings of God, but we don't want to, listen, we don't want to serve God. Peter served Jesus. Peter served God, didn't he? Hit it with his boat. He lent his boat unto Jesus so Jesus can preach the sermon. When you become concerned about the things of God, then God gets involved with the things pertaining to your life. Amen. In this present time now. And maybe that's the, maybe that's the, maybe that's the reason. In the year 2020, you got so caught up in being concerned about the things of the world, concerned about your needs, concerned about clothing, concerned about food, concerned about shelter, concerned about the circumstance of life, the government, and everything else. That you become so full of care like Martha. That you become just so disturbed and so overwhelmed. Instead of doing like Mary did, sat at the feet of Jesus to hear his word. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is the reason why God is giving this message to you tonight. This morning. I mean he's speaking through his mouthpiece. That's all I am. 
Amen. I'm just giving you God's word. It's up to you to receive the word of God, not from me as a mere man, but as it is in truth, the word of God that would effectively work within you because you believe it, because you receive it. If you don't receive it, they're not going to do you squat diddly, which simply means diddly squat. Amen? Amen. Are you still here? I'm here. Oh, my heart sometimes grieved me, but believers, Christians, even members of the church, of our church, because my, my, I'm the path. He says, I'm the watch over the flock. I watch, I see. And I see their responses and, you know, how they respond and how they act. And they set and they, they amen and they, you know, cheer. But then they leave out of here and they, you, they're not being doers of the word. They're not being doers of the word. And as a result, the Satan comes in and takes them at captive at his will. Now they are falling back to the wayside. Not because Satan had power over them arbitrarily anytime he got ready to do something. It's simply because they heard, but they would not do. They heard, but they will not do. They talked about it, jumped up and down about it, but they would not do. And it's an unfortunate thing, you're going to always have people that, are that way. You got some people that are going to love the, they're going to love this present world more than they love the things of God. And they're going to reap what they sow. It happened in Paul's days. He talked about a uh, 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 couple of guys. One was Demarcus and uh, Demetrius and another guy, I forget his name, in the scriptures. He said, they departed from us having loved, the th loved this present world more than the things of God. They departed from the faith. They went back into the world, serving the world. You can know the end result of that, right? right. Huh, Galatians 6 chapter says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever man soweth, that shall he also reap. You're going to reap what you sow. And you can't say, well, God put this up on me. No, you're reaping what you sow, dude. You're reaping what you sow. It's a, it's a law. A law happens the same way every time for anyone, anywhere. I'm talking about the law of God. I'm not talking about the laws of man. Now, natural laws, God created, they're going to happen the same way all the time. But man's law, you know what happens then. Right. <laughs> Imperfect men. Amen. But when it comes to God's law, God's word, you're going to reap what you sow. And you can't blame God. Now, men going to try. That's why he keep accurate records. You remember in the book of Revelation, saying when he, when he, in, in the great white throne judgment, <coughs> he said the books were open. B-O-O-K-S. Plural. Then there's one book for the Christian is called the book of life. Well, your name is in there. But even then, still, you're going to have to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and give account for the deeds done in your body. And Jesus got his own records. <laughs> Amen. And nothing to be worried about unless you're just being hard headed and stubborn and not doing what he tells you to do. Of course, you got time. You got time to straighten it out while you still live on the earth, amen. Hey, you got time to get the record. Hey, I had time to get my. Got, I had to have time to get mine get together. Right. I mean, back in days, man, I was, I was, man, I was, I was hard headed. I was like the horse and the mule. He had to put a bridle in my mouth. That's not. Hey, that, listen, that's not. That's not a good thing to say about me. But I'm gonna tell you about me, cause you know what? I've repented. I repented of my ways and I turned from my wicked ways. Amen. Repent means to make a 180 degree turn. That's what I've done. So I can talk about it now. And then I know what happened as a result. Because I confessed my sins and I've forsaken my sins. He has blessed me. I am a blessed man. Amen. Now, you know, everything's not perfect in my life. And I don't do everything perfect right now. And I still initiate 1 John 1 9. But I'm a whole lot, I'm a whole lot further than I, I, I used to be. I'm telling you, I can tell you my story. Oh, I'm telling you, when I walk home and I walk, I walk home and I look around, I say, oh man, God has blessed me. Yes. When I look at my lovely wife, I say, oh, God has blessed me. Yes. He has really blessed me. And it wasn't because I was so smart as far as natural mental smartness. It was because I was a wise man. And I considered my ways. And I considered the ways of the Lord. And I decided to walk in his pathway. And you can do the same thing. I don't care where you at. I don't care what your circumstance is. 
You can have faith now for faith for tomorrow. Amen. You can change the circumstances of your life now. And tomorrow, you'll be living in the blessings. You'll be, you'll be walking in the blessings that have already been provided for you. You'll be, the, you'll be like they said by Abraham. It says, the Lord has blessed my master greatly. Has given unto him silver and gold and men servants and maiden servants. And Abraham lived to a ripe old age, full of years. When he passed away, it wasn't with disease and sickness, rid of body. He just gave up the ghost and went home. They'll say that about you. Amen. But you got to make the decision. You got to stretch your hand out. You got to act upon the word. I, I'm, I'm not even in my notes, but I am. I'm full with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Isn't this wonderful? Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I came to church. Yeah. Now you may, say, you may say I say that because I'm just being funny. I'm actually glad I come to church. Because when the Holy Spirit gives me utterance, right. which I ask Him to do, that I may open my mouth and speak boldly as I ought to speak, to make known the gospel, because I quote the scriptures out as I've been talking, it's still been in line with the word. Mm -hmm. How to have faith now is faithful tomorrow. Amen. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. You're getting faith in your heart about the will of God, the plans of God, the purpose of God for your life so that you can begin to do it for tomorrow. And when the circumstances and tests and trials come for tomorrow, you'll be ready. Man, you be ready, go. Praise God. You don't, you don't got the word in you. Come on, bring it all. Bring it on, Satan. Bring it on. I got the shield of faith. Man. I got the helmet of the side. My lawns are girded by with truth. Yes. My feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I've got the sword of the spirit, yes. which is the word of God. Amen. Oh, glory to God, the shield of faith, the quench every fiery dart. Right. And I have the helmet of salvation. Come on, Mr. Devil. Amen. Come on. In fact, come on. I'm going after that joker, praise God. I'm going back and I'm going to recover everything he stole from me. Amen. And I'm going to set captives free while I'm at it. Hallelujah. I'm going to knock down the very gates of hell so I can reach there and bring others out of the, of the bondages of hell. Because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm ready for them. I'm having faith now, but I got faith for tomorrow. You're getting faith now because you got faith for tomorrow. Can you say amen? amen. Woo, isn't God good? Yes, he is. Isn't he good? Yes. I'm telling you, I'm shouting about it. Praise God. Oh, he's so good. God is our help. Our very present help in time of trouble. He sent his word to heal us and deliver us from destruction. Yes, Woo, glory be to God. Isn't that good, Sister Diana? I'm telling you, boy, that's, that's something to shout about. Now, I don't need no drums and no organ beating and stuff. I can dance right now. Glory to God. Woo! Glory! Woo! 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 Glory to God. And that wasn't no put on. That was real. Glory to God. I'm excited about the God's word. And you should be, too. Yes. Ain't nothing, but, ain't nothing wrong with, with being demonstrative about the word of God. Amen. Dancing and shouting. David did it. Yes. Shoot. In fact, he danced naked and his wife got mad at him and talked about him. Right. It was too, it was too, it, it was, it was too her, it was to her curse, praise God. Right. To her detriment. Mm -hmm. But David didn't care. He did it unashamedly. Yes, in front of everybody that was looking at him. I don't care about what you think about me. You show a fanatical. Well, you act that way when you go to the go to the to the football games or the basketball game. Sit in front of the television now, and boy, you jump it up and shouting. Right. You being fanatical, but not get fanatical about God. You want to talk about that? Right. He religious. Man. No, I'm not religious. Man. I have a relationship with the living God. Whoa, glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, listen, what I got's gonna be for eternal. Yes. It's gonna be for, be for eternity. What you worship and what you get excited about is only temporary. It's gonna pass away. Right. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. to God. I'm telling you. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. My, 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 yes, my. Yes, yes. yes. Glory to God. Ha, 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 ha. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Woo. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Now, listen, we said mixing the gospel with faith is mixing the words with actions. We saw in the book of 1 John, 
uh, 5, 4, it says, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And so our faith overcomes, faith which is acting on the word of God, is what overcomes the circumstances of life. We talked about that last week, right? In 1 John 5, 4, it says, Whatsoever, well, we are not a whatsoever, you are whosoever, amen? amen? I mean, you don't come back and say, well, well where is whatsoever? <laughs> you know, where is whosoever? You know, you are who, not a what? So it says, whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So if you get faith now, then you can overcome the world tomorrow. You can control the circumstances that's going to come tomorrow. The adversities, the tests and trials that's going to come tomorrow, they're going to come. Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulations, but the way you overcome it is by faith. And faith is simply hearing and believing and acting on the word of God. Amen. It's being like Peter said, nevertheless. It's being like Moses stretching his hands out over the Red Sea. He didn't feel like stretching his hand over the Red Sea. I'm sure he didn't. I mean, he heard the people screaming. He probably heard the chariot's wheels hitting the ground. I mean, big thunderous noise. The foot, the, the, the uh, foots of the soldiers hitting the ground, running, shouting, probably hitting their, their shields, bam, 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 and them shouting, big roar and noise. I'm sure he didn't feel like stretching his hand out across the Red Sea, but he did it because he says, nevertheless, at thy word. And when he stretched his hand across the Red Sea, the Red Sea, it opened up. The water congealed. How did it happen? The power of God came into activification. Amen. Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And the Bible says, when he had this done, when is a time frame? Amen. What if it says, when he one day decided to do it, do you think he would have caught any fish? No. His win had to be now. He had to act upon the word now. You got to start doing the word now in order for the power of God to be released. And it will be released because God always watches over his word to perform it. Amen. So whatsoever was born of God, whosoever was born of God overcome the world. <coughs> we saw 1 Timothy 6.12 where he instructs us to fight the good fight of faith. Remember that? 1 Timothy 6, 12 says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on the promise of eternal life. Mm -hmm. We looked at Hebrews 11, 6. says, but our faith is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder. So you don't come to God and you won't act upon his word if you don't believe that he is and that he's a rewarder. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the reason why many Christians are being doers of the word. They don't believe that God is and that he's a rewarder. Mm -hmm. And the only reason they don't believe God is and the only reason they don't know he's a, believe he's a rewarder, listen, is because they don't read the Bible that gives us the information of the things that were written for our admonition, for our reproof, and for our cautionary, uh, cautionary, uh, 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 cautionary warning. Those things that were written about the children of Israel, all the things when they obey God and, did, and obeyed his word, is written about the blessings that came up on their lives. The different men and women of God back in those days. Mm -hmm. Whenever they obeyed God and they acted upon God's word, the blessings came. It shows it. Right. It's written for us. And that's the reason why <coughs> you don't believe that God is and God is a rewarder. Because right, right. you're so busy listening to the, to the news of the world. The voice of the voices of the world. Mm -hmm. The voices of unbelief. The word voices of doubt. The voices of doctrines of devils. <coughs> intellectualism intellectualism that comes from men Amen. the modern modern men advanced men intellectuals of men intellectualism of men mm -hmm. advanced and you still making bombs that, that, that supersedes the A bomb the, the atom bomb mm -hmm. now they got mega bombs mm -hmm. to destroy one another now they got smart, listen, they got smart missiles. Right. Smart, yeah. They can zero on and kill you 
within a, milli, mil, a millimeter. And you call that advanced society. No, no, no. You need to change your focus as a believer. Once you become born again, the world's going to do what the world does. They've already been taken captive by Satan. You are the believer. You are in this world, but not of this world. And the reason why you don't believe that God is and that he's a rewarder is because you haven't gotten to the Bible. You listen to everything else but the word. Your thoughts are, con are, are just consumed about the world and the ways of the world, the thoughts of the world. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we shared a number of scriptures. Now, how do we have faith now for the future? I'm going to see if I can get this real quick. How much time I got? <clears throat> uh, oh my God. How do we have faith for the future? Now listen to this. Every born again believer has had the gospel preached to them. Therefore, every one who has become born again has faith in their hearts planted because of the word of faith. I want you to turn with me in your Bible to the book of Romans, the 12th chapter real quick. And then we're going to share a few scriptures before we close. I've got 15 minutes, so I've got a little bit of time there. But I want us to just move forward. The Holy Spirit led me to go back and you know, give a, <laughs> a recap. But I, I said new things, didn't I? I didn't say, I, I said new things. The Holy Spirit gave new revelation. Yes, he did. Praise the Lord. So I'm not going to try to rush through this because I got my notes because God knows what we need to hear. Amen. Amen. Now, listen. Romans, the 12th chapter. Here it's going to reveal to us that every born again believer has had the gospel preached to them. Therefore, everyone who has had the gospel preached to them that has received the gospel has faith in their hearts planted because of the word of faith. So here in Romans, the 12th chapter, verse number 1, he writes and he says this. He says, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies unto God as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Another translation says, which is your spiritual worship. You know, Jesus said, they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, truth means the word of God. If you're going to worship God, you're going to worship him by the word. Every time you get into the Word, every time you meditate upon the Word, every time you act upon the Word of God, guess what you're doing? You're worshiping God. Amen. Did you know that? Yeah. It's not because you, you, I mean, it's part of it when you come to church and you sing and worship songs and lift your hands up to God. But another way of worshiping God is when you hear His Word, believe His Word, and act upon His Word. You're worshiping God. So it says right here, it says that it is our reasonable service by presenting our, God, our, our, our bodies, our physical bodies, unto God as living sacrifice, living holy, sanctified, separated from the things of the world. You don't live like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, do the same thing the world do. If you are, then you're not living, presenting your bodies unto God as a living sacrifice. You can't be standing in the dance floor in a club and you just, you know, just making your body go through all kind of motions and, and sexual gyrations and stuff and you be presenting your body unto God. That's not worshiping God. Right. You ain't worshiping God and you sipping on, you sipping on something and you're getting yourself a little buzz and stuff, you know. Right. Well now you become incoherent and you start acting and saying anything that comes, that comes to your mind and someone's going to come through the devil. Right. Make you act all kind of ways or you putting something up your nose or Whatever it may be, smoking something on a you know a piece of cigarette and stuff, and you and you presenting your body under God, right. or Amen. laying with somebody's wife and it's not yours, Amen. or being laying with somebody you're not married to, Amen. giving up giving up yourself to to somebody else and you ain't married to, but yet you want to believe God, you know, for for a wife and you know she you know I want a good wife. But you land with anybody you want to, messing their life up because of your <laughs> selfish. Man. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Amen. Now he said, let he said, present your body. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. Mm -hmm. Be not conformed. This is for the believer. This is for the Christian. This is getting faith now for faith to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
that you know how to possess your vessel right. in the yes. sight of God. Yes. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. So when the temptations come, you know, no, 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 no. Right. I'm not to become from this world. I'm not to act like this world. Right. I'm not to talk like this world. You see a crowd of folks, hundreds of thousands of folks running by you. And they're screaming and hollering. And they tell you, what's happening? Are we going down here to burn that MF down? Because they did such and such a thing and it ain't right. And you listen to that and then find you join along with them and stuff because you're not, you're not in the word. You ain't presenting your, you're not, listen, you're not, you're being conformed to the world's way of thinking. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Oh, I know. I, I know this. I know. Listen, if you can't say amen, say oh me. Right. Amen. Amen. And then I say, if the shoe fits you, don't wear it. <laughs> Throw it away. Get rid of it. Now let me get let me get past this. And be not conformed to this world. This world. But be transformed. See? There it is. Be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace of God given to me. To every man and woman that's born again in the body of Christ that is among you. Not to think of him or herself more highly than he or she ought to think. But to think soberly. To think in line with God's word. Get out of that pride thinking. If that you all this in a bag of chips because of your, your natural intellectual accomplishment. That don't mean squat billy to God. That's why Paul says, he says, all those things that I've acquired, the education and all the accolades that I got as being the Pharisees, he said, I count them as, listen, he called it dung. You know what dung means? It means poop. He said, so that I may get, so that I may attain the excellency of Christ. You need to be thinking the same way. Let me get on now. He says, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man, every woman, the measure of faith. How did you get the measure of faith? Go to Romans the 10th chapter. Go to Romans the 10th chapter. You're in Romans the 12th chapter. How did you receive the measure of faith? How did you receive the measure of faith? How did we all receive the same measure of faith? We're talking about how do you get faith now for faith for tomorrow. Well, every one of us when we became born again received the measure of faith. Because God the Father is no respecter of person. And you need to know this. You received the measure of faith when you became born again. In the book of Romans, the 10th chapter, if you're there, say amen. amen. It says in Romans, the 10th chapter, verse number 8, knows what it says. It says, but what saith if the word, the word is nigh thee, near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of what? Faith. The word of what? Faith. The word of faith which we preach. Now right now, what I'm doing now is I'm teaching the word of faith. Every time I open up ch chapter and verse of scripture and I give you verse, uh, verses of scripture out of the Bible, what I'm doing is I'm teaching the word of faith. I'm ministering the word of faith. The word which is near me, even in my mouth and in my heart, that is the word of faith which I am preaching to you right now. So you're hearing and if you're smart, you're receiving the word of faith into your hearts. You're accepting the word of God as true and real. Yes. Or you may be out there just criticizing because you don't like the way I present the word to you because it's going to hurt your feelings. And you want to continue to live in the life that you want to live. Well, that's your choice. Now, I want you to drop down to verse number 17. Verse 8 says, But what saith that the word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the heard word of faith which we preach. So verse number 17 says, So then faith cometh by, faith cometh by, now see I've quoted that scripture off before and I had you make that confession, but this is where I found it from, I found it from the Bible. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is the gospel which we preach, which is the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. Now, I want you to go up to verse number 13. Verse number 13 says this. Or we go to verse number, verse number 11. Verse number 11 says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, the black and the white. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard 
preach the word of faith. And how shall they hear the word of faith without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And we have been sent. You and I have been sent. Every believer that's born in the body of Christ has been given the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. We have an obligation. We have a responsibility. Nay, we have a commandment by God to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations so that the end can come. Amen. And if you're not doing your job, then you are, you're negating the commandment of God and you're sinning. Amen. You're not witness to somebody, you're sinning. If you're not living the gospel inside of somebody so they can read the living epistle from your very lifestyle, you're sinning. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're called to be lights in this dark world. We're called to be lights in the darkness. Right. We're supposed to be living epistles to be read, read, read by all men. We have been given the ministry of reconciliation. To tell them that God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself because of what Adam did. That's your responsibility. That's my responsibility. You've been called to preach. Yes. We're not talking about five-fold ministry. We're talking about just being a born-again Christian. Right. Isn't this good? Amen. Are you glad you came to church? Yes. Huh? I'm, no, I'm glad you came to church. Because mm -hmm. I would have never, never been able to speak to you on Facebook Live streaming right now if you had never tuned in. Because now I done done my job. So when I stand before Jesus, he can say, well done, my good and faithful service. Now whether you receive it or not, that's a whole different story. Are you listening to me? Yeah. See, I have done my job. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you tuned in. I'm glad you tuned in, number one, because I love you and I want you to have the best of God. I want to see you grow. I want to see you overcome. I don't want to see you be defeated. Can you say amen? Now, now, listen up. Don't get busy on me now. Now listen to me. Now we go on back down. We go for verse 15. How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them which preach the gospel. Your feet are beautiful. That preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And verse 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you heard the word concerning salvation, when you heard the word concerning the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, you heard it, you believed it, you acted upon it, guess what? You received the measure of faith. So that's how you receive faith now for faith for the future. Now you're going to build upon that faith. You're going to build upon the faith because you first heard the word of faith. It was for salvation. It was to get you into the door. It was to get you to first base. But see, after you get to first base, you can't stay on first base and then, you know, you win the game. You got to get all the way around to home, home plate, don't you? You got to get around the home plate. Home plate is, hey, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Now this laid up for me a crown of righteousness. That's where you want to get to. Amen. Amen. But you got to get to first place. You got to get born again. Now you become born again. I'm I'm, listen, I'm talking to the choir. You are already born again. You have the measure of faith. But you have to increase your faith. You have to grow in faith. You have to get to the place of exceeding growing faith. Because God needs you and I. I say God needs you yeah. on the earth. Because if you're not doing, if he can't find no man on the earth to fulfill his will of reaching the lost, then the lost won't be reached. Mm -hmm. You say, well, wait a minute, can God do it himself? No, God gave Adam the rulership of this earth. And God can't come in and usurp his authority, his will upon mankind upon the earth. Because Satan now is the God of this world. God does things according to established order. It's a law. He puts laws in mind. His sovereign word is on trial here. And he cannot violate his sovereign word mm -hmm. as a sovereign God. Amen. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. This is how serious this business is. Mm -hmm. The fate of human beings of receiving eternal life is in your hands. It's in our hands. Can you say amen? amen. What time I got? Five minutes? I'm over five minutes? Yeah. Oh my God. I'm glad, I'm glad Pastor Pat is not here. Praise God. <laughs> don't, don't tell her. 
All right, praise the Lord. Listen, listen, everybody. I'm so glad you tuned in with us with Abiding Faith Christian Center. Remember, those of you are friends, partners of Abiding Faith Christian Center, Cash App, Dollar Sign, AFCC Flint is where you can give into the work of this ministry of Abiding Faith Christian Center so we can fulfill God's divine vision. So you can give to the ministry by just going into your telephone cash app. Our cash app uh, um, site is dollar sign AFCC Flint and uh, you can give there and uh, praise God you'll be given into good ground. Well, there may be those of you that are watching this program now that have not accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. You have not become born again. You have not received the gift of eternal life. Listen, today is the day of your salvation because tomorrow is not promised to you. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, after that the judgment. You see, once you die, once your body stops functioning, your spirit leaves that body and you either go to heaven or you go down the place called Sheol. It's a place of torment, torment that was made for the devil and his angels, never made for man. And you don't want to go there because it's going to be for eternity. God did not make it for you. And God is not going to send you there. He's, you're going to go there because you haven't received the gift of eternal life. That's the only reason why men and women go there. They have not received the gift of eternal life. I want to give you an opportunity. The Bible says in John 1.12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power, the right, to become sons of God, even to those that believe on his name. Now in the book of Romans 10.9 and 10, it tells us to do this way. It said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ up from the dead, you will be saved. For with your heart you believe unto righteousness and with your mouth you go from here, being a sinner, to with your mouth confession is made of the salvation. Listen, Jesus came to the earth. He came in the earth and was in the flesh as a man. He was crucified on the cross. He died on the cross. He went down to a place of shoal, a torment, for three days to pay the penalty for Adam's trans trespass. Once the penalty was paid, once the, uh, once the judgment was met, God raised him from the dead so that you and I can be saved. You see, Jesus was our substitute. He took our place to pay the penalty for us so that we would not have to go there. We'll go there if we don't accept his sacrifice for us, for you. So I want to lead you into a prayer. To pray this prayer just so that not to even imitate me but because you want to receive the gift of eternal life. Well, you're going to bow your head and close your eyes. You're going to say these words to God because that's where your help is coming from. I'm going to ask the believers here to pray along with us loud. If you're sitting with someone in their home and they're born again, that believer next to you, I'm going to ask you to pray with them to encourage them to pray. Because you know how Satan is. He doesn't want us to a sinner to receive the gift of eternal life. <clears throat> if you're by yourself. <clears throat> They're on streaming live Facebook or YouTube or maybe on Twitter and you're watching this message. Pray this prayer where you're at right now because God is listening to you and he's looking at your heart. That's why you have to believe with your heart, not just say it out of the top of your head. So bow your head and close these eyes and say these words with me right now because you believe them in your heart and you want to be, receive the gift of eternal life. Say me with right now. Say, Dear God. Dear God. Come on, everybody. Say, Dear God. Dear God. I come to you now. Just as I am, a sinner, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, that he came to the earth in the flesh, and that he was crucified on the cross for me, that he died and was buried for three days and three nights. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead so I could be saved. I accept what Jesus Christ did for me. I accept him now as my Lord and my Savior. And because I believe this in my heart and I've confessed with my mouth, I am now saved. I am born again. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Glory to God. You say, why are y'all excited like that? Well, the Bible says in the book uh, Bible that the, uh, angels in heaven are rejoicing over one sinner who has repented. In other words, they're having a party in heaven for you right now. 
Listen, we're excited about it too because now you're our brother, our sister in Christ. You're in the family of God and we're going to spend time for eternity with God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints that went home and uh, with the Lord now. I'm telling you what, there's a new heaven and new earth that's coming up. God's going to make all things new and you're going to be a part of it. And we're excited about it. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Listen, we have a book in my hands called The New Birth. This book here we offer to everyone that's become born again. We offer to you free of charge. All you have to do is call that telephone number at the end of the broadcast. That's 810-407-8584. Call us. Let us know that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Ask for this book and we'll send it to you right away. And you will be blessed by it because it gives you scripture foundation of what you just did with your life. And if you're looking for a good church home, and you're here in the local area close to it, we, I'm gonna suggest a good church for you. It's called Abiding Faith Christian Center. Come on down and become a member of Abiding Faith Christian Center because you will need a shepherd that will feed you the word of God so you can grow up from your baby from your baby stage that you're at right now, okay? Then we'll see you soon. Now, I have a book in my hand called Walking as a New Creation. <clears throat> After receiving the eternal life, a book that the Spirit of God led me to write with an encouragement by my lovely wife. Thank God for my wife. And I wrote this book and it'll give you about a deeper teaching in being coming born again, becoming a new creature in Christ Jesus, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. You can get this book. It's going to cost you $10, but it's well worth the investment. But you don't have to be just become born again to get it. You who are born again already, and your walk has kind of been a little shaky, or you just want to get a deeper knowledge of being a new creature in Christ Jesus, then I advise for you to get this book. Go online at our website, www.abodyfaithchristiancenter.com, and you can order the book on there or you can go to Amazon.com, uh, Amazon, and you can order it from the Kindle, and you get it, and it only cost you $7 because it'll be electronically downloaded to your device, okay? Or, praise God, you can buy the book. Well, I'm Pastor Rodney M. Hamer. My lovely wife, she hasn't been here today, and uh, praise God, she's on a sabbatical. I miss her so much. We all miss her, but we're the pastor of the Body Faith Christian Center family. We want to remind you that the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, verse number 7 says... If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. God bless you. We'll see you next time.